Jennifer says tank, Russian tank story. I think I've told this story, though. I, I, I just remembered that. I think I told this story. But when I was in the tank corps, the, the, we were, uh, you know, we were really uh, um, trained. We trained against the Russian T-72. The T-72 at the time was considered... Um, was considered the most advanced tank in the world. Um, it had a very slick profile, so it was very difficult to actually hit it. Um, and it was, it was relatively fast. And it had what no Western tank had, was it had an automatic uh, loading system of the uh, projectiles that a, a tank fires. So in a typical tank, you have four members, you have a driver, you have a loader, you have a gunner who shoots, and you have a tank commander. I was a gunner and, and actually, you know, hurt my back in tank commander school, and then I got shifted to military intelligence. But uh, so we were basically training against T-72, uh, the T-72s, and, 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 uh, and uh, you know, we were we were uh, told that you know they had the best tanks, and unfortunately, I was in the most primitive tanks the Israelis had. The Israelis had these old Centurion tanks, which were British tanks uh, from the 1950s and 60s, um, and uh, some of the units in the Israeli uh, tank corps had the uh, the M60s, I think it was the the American new American tank that had just been brought into service in the late 70s. And uh, the new Israeli tank, which turned out to be probably the best tank in the world, at least at the time, which was the Merkava, which was a, a, a very, very advanced tank um, and very, very focused on protecting the soldiers in the tank. My tank was, was like a, a, a coffin. If it got hit, you were dead. I mean, there was just no way out of it. Uh, and you probably died a very, very slow, painful uh, death of being roasted alive um, uh, in the tanks, so it was uh, it was brutal. That's the Centurion tanks. Uh, anyway, so we trained against the Russian tanks, and and of course we were always told, you know, we were scared of the Russian tanks, and it was always a worry, and it was always a fear. And then um, uh, the Israeli tank corps actually engaged with the Russians in with the Russian tanks with the, that the Syrians had in 1982 in the in the war in Lebanon. Now by that point, I was in military intelligence. I was not in um, in a tank corps, uh, luckily, uh, and uh, so I, I didn't see combat in that sense. Uh, but I was part of my role in intelligence was to monitor what was going on, and, and uh, I'll, I'll give you an example of that in a minute. But uh, so one of the things that we noticed was that um, that one of the things uh, the one of the things that happens to the uh, to the Automatic loading system. Now, the automatic loading system has a lot of advantages because you can you, you can staff the tank with only three people. Um, you, you have less human error and all of that stuff. But what it turns out is that with the T-72, you didn't actually have to hit the tank. You could hit anywhere close to the tank. And the, the uh, what do you call the, uh, the, the, the in, I explosion would rattle the tank. And basically, the rattling of the tank would make the automatic loader go, basically, uh, would disable it. And it would stop working. So you didn't even have to hit the tank to disable the tank. Now, without the automatic loader, given that they only had three people, there's no way to load, load a projectile into the, into the tank. And the tank became useless, and the crew just would get out and run. So the tank would suffer a concussion, and it would be completely disabled. And one of the things I remember, vaguely remember, in, uh, during that war was um, the Americans and the Israelis uh, wanted to get their whole, uh, hands on a T-72. They wanted to, you know, because you wanted to get one so that you could actually train against it. This is one of the great uh, advantages the U.S. military had, is it had Israel collecting, as it won wars, collecting Soviet equipment so that then the Americans could train against that equipment. They would study it, they would learn it, they would get every aspect of it, and then they would, this is what we did. So one of the, one of the missions during, uh, during the war in Lebanon was to get one of these abandoned tanks and to bring it back uh, to Israel, which, which the Israeli military did. And then they had, a, they had a T-72 that they could target practice against. 
and could learn its weaknesses and could learn its strengths and could learn exactly how to defeat it. And Israel did this with weapon system after weapon system after weapon system of in the Soviet era. And I assume, uh, you know, that continues in the Russian era. That is, that uh, there's, there's a lot of knowledge that we have uh, about all of this. Um, wow, Roland says he's in the Pyrenees in Catalonia. Catalonia is not a country, Roland. It's, that's in Spain, right? Um, uh, so, uh, wow, that's a beautiful country. I love Spain. It's a great place. The Pyrenees are beautiful. Catalonia is beautiful. The food is amazing. All right, that's my, uh, that's my Russian uh, tank story. All right. Are we done with tanks, Ukraine, and Russia for a little while? Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.